Hey guys, got a new last epoch build, and this is going to be a racing strike, void beam, hybrid, uh, spell damage, melee damage, void knight, and it's sort of an experimental build I wanted to try out, uh, mainly uh, using the void beams as a source of damage, and then also doing sort of like a hybrid um, spell damage melee build. Now the build did turn out to be pretty fun to play, but uh, due to, you know, a, f a few interactions and like how the actual spell mechanics for the void beams on a racing strike work it ended up being uh, not really as good as i would have hoped there is also a bug in one of the uh, nodes uh, the void beam nodes uh, so it is uh not really working as well as it could all right so what is void beam void beam is a node you can get it from a racing strike and shield rush we're using just the racing strike one so we have a chance to um, make this Void Beam whenever we uh, kill an enemy. And then over here, we have a 100% chance to create a Void Beam when we hit a rare or a boss enemy, right? So there are th these two ways to generate, the make the Void Beams. And then there is this one node here, the Ravenous Void. So if you kill five or more enemies simultaneously with a Racing Strike, you create four Void Beams, okay? So this one is the node that is kind of bugged because these Void Beams are supposed to be traveling out to other targets, but they don't. They just kind of like stand still. All right, so that's the bug node. And then for the, um, as for the Void Beams themselves, they're actually doing a decent amount of damage. You can see each Void Beam right now is doing about a 12, uh, uh, say like 10K, 12K DPS. It's pretty nice it's not that bad i mean just on its own not that good but you can actually stack these up right so you can have multiple void beams damaging the same target so uh we can actually get out about maybe 10 to 20 ish or so void beams per uh on a boss uh it's not really sustainable because you know obviously mana and a racing strike does cost quite a bit of mana but the nice thing is uh the racing strike will apply the void beam right and then your echoes from your void knight mastery will also make a void beam and then also the um time loop node which gives you another echo whenever you use it so if we use a racing strike you can see we got another one and every now and then we'll get three uh yeah, right there see due to the mastery and then those will also create the void beams right so you have the potential to actually stack up quite a lot of uh, void beams on a single target and do some nice damage, right? So if you have 10 Void Beams, that's like, what, uh, 100, maybe 120k DPS. It's pretty nice, right? So it's, it looks, the damage itself is uh, actually pretty nice. But, um, so the main problem is this Regicide node. So it's when you hit a rare or boss enemy. So now, and then if you guys have played Multi-Strike Smite, you'll probably know what the problem is, and that is, you know, uh, magic monsters and some normal monsters like profane fleshes and stuff like that can end up being very annoying because you're not going to be proccing the void beams right and honestly this chance to create a void beam on kill is just kind of trash because you're going to be killing the mobs let's say you use a racing strike and you kill a bunch of mobs right there's like no mobs left on the screen right a racing strike is going to one shot them so these end up really doing nothing just kind of look pretty you know it looks really nice you know i'm getting a bunch of these void beams popping out when you kill them so it's kind of like an mtx kind of thing but they end up don't really they don't really do that much because they only last three seconds and it has a very small hitbox right so by the time let's say you you hit a full screen of enemies you wipe them out and you get a bunch of void beams by the time the the mobs from the next screen start running into your to you the void beams are already gone right so kind of a, a little bit um i don't know i think on kill is kind of uh is not really all that great for these void beams i think if it was like a chance on hit right so if this was a chance on hit then it would be a lot nicer and if the void beams themselves lasted a little bit longer maybe like one second two seconds more and had a bigger hitbox it would um actually be a really nice way to play um make this uh this kind of build a lot more viable all right so let's go into a quick mono and um we'll just kind of uh see what it plays like now I'm at 200 corruption and I think about this level of corruption is where the build is starting to um, fall off uh, in terms of damage and defense. Uh, you could get a lot more uh, better gear like you could uh, use the uh, get a little bit more tankiness from a better uh, body armor. The uh, unique armor that gives you what uh, 
15% less damage when you're wielding a two-handed weapon uh, and stuff like that. But um, basically what we're using, um, let me just kill these mobs real quick. All right, so uh, we're using a Racing Strike, uh, Void Cleave, Volta Reversal, Missile Echoes, and Rive, okay? So um, we're not actually using Volta Reversal to um, as a main way to sustain our mana. Okay, so we're actually stacking a bit of mana, right? And it turns out that if you actually do stack a decent amount of mana, it's not really that much investment either. You can actually um, sustain your racing strikes pretty nicely, right? And then uh, if you set up Rive, you know, with some mana gain on hit, and then the helmet mod, you know, with the mana gain when you use Rive and hit at least one enemy, turns out that you're actually getting a decent amount of mana back and are able to sustain your racing strike in monolith, right? So we can void cleave a racing strike rive, right? And we can actually sustain uh, our mana throughout the monolith and it does feel pretty nice, right? And then on bosses, we can just spam a racing strike and then use volatile reversal for damage uh, and stuff like that. So um, if anything, maybe if this void beam build isn't really all that great, it is sort of a different way you can build your racing strike if you want to go full crit you can actually uh actually build a racing strike without having to rely on the first of all the cooldown right so you can use a zero cooldown a racing strike uh if you do get about 400 to 500 mana it uh definitely feels good to play and you could probably um you know not have to always rely on this vault or reversal to reset your mana and that kind of stuff so uh that is kind of uh, a takeaway from uh, trying this character out and maybe i might try a crit version in the future all right so let's just go through the monolith and most of the time we're actually just going to be using our um uh void cleave and rive to just kind of like kill off these mobs um stuff like that all right let's see if we can get a nice big pack uh i guess it's, it's okay um, a racing strike on its own, since we're not actually building into a lot of like fizz damage and that kind of stuff, is um, not really um, all that great. But you know, with the um, abyssal echoes, since we are building into quite a bit of uh, spell damage, uh, it actually it does end up doing a decent amount of damage uh, with the racing strike combined with the abyssal echoes. So you can see my mana is actually totally fine throughout this monolith. I'm not really ha even having to alter reversal yet. Oh, and another thing that is kind of annoying is a lot of the objective bosses are not classified as a rare or boss. Uh, so killing them, you're just going to have to rely on your, you know, Abyssal Echoes damage and just like some pure uh, Erasing Strike, like this thing here. Um, yeah, but you know... We are doing a decent amount of damage, so it is okay. But you can see it is taking a little bit of time to actually kill them. But yeah. So there is, uh, that is one of the annoying things. Like, if it was, you know, a chance to hit magic, rare, and boss mobs, it would be a lot nicer. But, you know, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, you just have to rely on a racing strike and abyssal echoes to uh, kind of like um, do the work for us. But, you know, as you can see, it's totally fine to just use your racing strike uh, and in, into the rive combo, a racing strike into rive, and then uh, you can sustain your mana like pretty nicely uh, if you build a little bit of mana, right? Okay, so that is going to be the Echo. Uh, we can actually go take a look at a Shade of Orbis so you can see the single target. So let's see, I think I have one here. Now, single target can be a little bit of a problem with bosses that move a lot because Void Beams have very um, small hitbox, so... Hopefully, uh, we'll be fine. Uh, this is the Blood one. Might be annoying. Okay, let's kill this guy off. And actually, we are like pulling him out of the void beams. 
Well, we'll get him eventually. I think there is some endurance mod on this. All right, we should get him in this round with the uh, Rive kill threshold, maybe. All right, there we go. Oh, wow, two LP Apathy's Maw. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, so uh, you can see the single target is, it is okay, right? So I think if the Void Beams did get a little bit of a rework, like maybe getting a little bit more duration, some more um, area, you know, the, making the hitbox larger. And, you know, you, this could be actually a very fun build to do. All right, so let's go into how we're building it. Let's go over the skills first. Uh, Erasing Strike, first of all, we're coming down to the Void Beams. Um, and we are getting this Regicide node. It's the main important node you want. You can, if you want to get some more MTX, you can go for two points here. It's going to make it look a little bit cooler. All right. Um, and then we need the Void Lens so we get more damage for our Void Beams. Okay, so in the Void Beams, the, a lot of times when you're trying to scale these kind of uh, sub skills, the main problem is the added damage. Where are you going to get your added damage? But thankfully, Void Beams... They get added spell damage per vitality. So right, we're uh, so we're vitality stacking. We're at 85 vitality right now. I can get quite a bit more, and that ends up being like more than enough uh, flat damage. You can see we have 170 spell void damage for these uh, void beams. So that's pretty nice. All right, then after that we're going to come down to time loop, uh, so we can actually have a zero cooldown erasing strike. This is going to make uh, give you a pretty big uh, mana cost. You only you only want one node here. I've tried two and I've tried three. And it is okay, but it's not really mana efficient. So I think just one point is enough. All right, and then we have the no cooldown. And then after that, you actually do want to make your Erasing Strike do a bit of damage because if it's not killing mobs in Monoliths, then, well, you're not going to be uh, proccing some of these Void Beam on kill things and stuff like that, so... Oh, and then also you want the Obliteration node uh, maxed out for the added spell. Uh, spell Void Damage is going to be doubled with a two-handed weapon, so that's 60 Spell Void Damage for our Void Beams, which is going to be pretty nice. And after that, with your um, remaining points, you can kind of do whatever you want. I just went into uh, some more damage. I uh, went into some more, uh, more damage to slowed, stuff like that. You don't really need these points. They're just kind of uh, making your racing strike, you know, hit it a little bit harder. And okay, so after that, we're going to go to Void Cleave. And with Void Cleave, uh, what we're doing is we're using it as movement skill. Now, Void Cleave is probably the best movement skill in the game, uh, hands down. Uh, better than Teleport, better than all those other skills. And um, uh, yeah, I, I have the first time I actually tried Void Cleave as a movement skill, and I was just blown away. It's just amazing. Best movement skill in the game. Definitely, you guys should try it out on, I think, any Paladin builds. I'll probably want to try to at least use Void Cleave because it's just that good. Okay, so uh, ended up, uh, we're going into, first thing we want to get is the movement skill, right? So we get Gravity's Edge, so it's a movement skill. Then we're going to go up to the additional charge, all right? So we're not running the boots that give you an additional charge. Uh, I guess you could run those if you want. Um, I just had these really nice pair of boots with a lot of vitality and movement speed, armor, and hybrid health, so... Uh, it's pretty hard to not use this pair of boots, right? So I'm not going for the extra, so I'm going for the extra charge, and then I'm going down to Resonating Cleave. So you want to have this node uh, as soon as possible as well. So this is going to cast our Abyssal Echoes whenever we Void Cleave. So this is going to add quite a bit of extra damage um, on single target, and um, also when we're doing Monoliths, it's going to allow us to avoid Cleave and then just use Rive, right? And Rive plus this Abyssal Echoes is going to be doing enough damage to take care of uh, most monsters in the monolith. So you're not like 100% reliant on your Erasing Strike to do damage. Uh, another cool thing is, um, I guess we can go over Rive next. So let's just finish this tree here. So we're coming down to get the Erasing Strike always crits. Now this is going to be very nice for monoliths. Um, basically just helps your monolith clear out, uh, clear a little bit better. Okay, then after that, just the remaining points you can put wherever you want. I put one extra point into a dark pathway so it has some more uh, better cooldown recovery speed. So if you don't have a level 21, you can just uh, lose this point here. 
All right, so let's, next let's go over Rive. Now, Rive is very, you can kind of do whatever you want with this skill. You don't even really need to spec it. Maybe you could spec something else like Sigils of Hope if you want, stuff like that. But I just wanted to, I, I spec'd into it. So basically, we're just going into the uh, challenge node. So we pull enemies with the second strike, uh, amazing node. And then we're going into the kill threshold. This is pretty much all you need. And the rest, you can do whatever you want. And I figured since we're using a two-handed weapon, might as well just take the Folk Cleaver node, get some more damage, and arrive. You can see it's at 22k um, DPS, so it's not all that bad. I um, mean, not really all that good, but this, in combination with Abyssal Echoes, is enough to uh, clear out trash and all that kind of stuff. And another cool interaction is this bound weapon. So we're going to be making forged weapons every now and then. And the forged weapons can proc these Abyssal Echoes as well, so it's kind of cool. And it... Kind of helps to clear a little bit when you have these forge weapons out. I mean, they do die pretty fast, but I I thought it was kind of cool uh, when I when it happened. So uh, there is that. Okay, then after that, um, since we are getting a lot of echo chance uh, from our mastery and from our talents, I decided just to go into this um, double echo chance and then the more damage for echoed attacks. I don't know. You, I guess you could kind of do whatever you want. You could go to the crit thing. You know, third strike always crits. Um, now there's something to know about this. So there is the Azure Crescendo node here. That's going to give you 15 mana on the third hit, right? So if you have three points in it, but this does change the sequence to a one, two, one, two, three. So I was trying this out and it's okay. I guess uh, maybe you might get some mana out of it, but it just didn't really feel good because I mean, you are pulling enemies twice, but then that means you're spending extra mana, right? So you're going to be spending a little bit more mana. And then it's going to take longer to get to the third the third uh, hit. The third hit is our execute, basically, the uh, culling strike, basically. So, um, And a lot of times when I'm in the monolith, you're going to, like, void cleave. You're going to do, like, a little bit, maybe, like, three hits, two, three hits of your rive. And if, you wanna, if you're going to wait for the third strike, it ends up taking a lot of time. And it just kind of um, didn't feel as smooth, so I just uh, unspecced it. I guess if you really want to get like the max mana sustain, you can go into this as well. All right, so for Abyssal Echoes, um, we're not going into this uh, hit damage thing here. We're actually using the uh, Abyssal Decay um, node, so we're going to go up to the no long the node where it doesn't change, but it um, does more damage, and then it makes this rift. So when we cast Void Cleave, you can see this is the uh, Abyssal Echoes, and it's just going to keep popping on the ground. Um, so it's going to help our single target out a little bit. And then after that, we need to go to the Void Supremacy so that we get 80% more damage with um, a Racing Strike. It's going to be very nice for our Monolith Clear. And then after that, I decided to just go into the uh, Spell Damage and the Abyssal Decay duration so we get some more damage on our Abyssal Decay. So the uh, Abyssal Decay, basically, it's going to apply a dot. And when you hit an enemy with a dot, all the damage that the dot does gets, you know, happens right away. So if you increase the duration, you just basically increase the damage, right? So uh, pretty nice. Uh, and it does end up doing quite a lot of damage. Okay, so for Ball Tower Reversal, we're doing the standard uh, dot Ball Tower Reversal going into both nodes here. Uh, and then we're not taking the extra 300% cooldown because we do want to restore our mana. So for bosses, Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to Void Cleave, a Racing Strike a few times, Reversal, Void Cleave, and then go back into some more Racing Strikes, and then Rive. And that's going to end up, you know, you're going to put up what, like, I think maybe you can get up to about 15 to 20 Void Beams in that duration. You know, maybe some of them will start expiring by the time you're finishing your combo, so maybe let's just say 10 to 15 Void Beams. And since each of our Void Beams is doing about, what, 12k, so it's 120, uh... 120k DPS. All right, so not all that bad. So that's it for the skills. Uh, let's go over the gear real quick. So basically, we're vitality stacking, right? So we want to get vitality. Um, all of my idols are vitality. You can see vitality, armor shred, vitality, 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 mana health, mana health. Simple idols uh, for the gear. Let's go over. Uh, actually, let's go over the weapon first. So. Dream Thorn, uh, this is probably going to be one of the better weapons to use because it gives you Void Penetration, uh, basically, right? So the Void Penetration does really help out with the Void Beam damage, and 
mine is kind of bad you'd probably want to have the uh, t7 attack speed and then a t5 void damage all right so helmet uh basically you do want to get some mana on some of your gear right so i found that having about 400 to 500 mana is um gonna be sort of the, a nice sweet spot you could say where it does feel nice where you can uh you know do your void cleave your racing strike ride void cleave or race you know and do that kind of stuff you know pretty consistently in the monoliths without having to really worry about your mana so you do want to get about 400 500 mana so you're going to need to get some exalted mana uh, in some places you can see i have it on my helmet and you can get it on the chest as well and let's see i have a little bit of mana from the belt and then I have a little bit of mana and attunement on my gloves. I ideally, you probably want the exalted mana on here. But anyway, so that's the gear. Um, after that, on the helmet, you definitely want to get this. Um, probably this one should be the exalted mod. Is you want to get the rive, uh, gain eight mana when you use rive and hit at least one enemy. You want this to be as high as possible. You see, mine is only an eight, but it's T five, right? So if you get a T seven of this mod, it goes up to like what 15, 16, I think. Can't remember exactly, but. Go for the exalted um rive mana gain on hit and uh, yeah so check that out in the planner then after that you just want the usual um you know health resist uh basically gear stats is vitality first of all and then mana up to about 400 500 mana and then after that you're just going to go for the usual health um endurance crit avoid resistance right and okay so that is pretty much the affixes want to get some void damage void penetration on the amulet the body armor, um, I think it's really good to get the vitality. You don't really need the plus two or racing strike, and you can get the some mana over here as well uh, on your second prefix. So you can go vitality mana, basically. Um, uh, either probably the percent mana would be good. All right, and then after that, uh, for the rings, you're gonna want coral rings with the because they have six vitality, right? So coral rings with um, increased void damage. Or damage over time uh, and then probably strength or attunement I guess attunement is going to give you some mana so it's going to be kind of nice but strength probably better because uh, you get a lot of armor uh, and on the belt uh, belt there isn't really much to get here um, you know just kind of use it to fill out your stats uh, let's see and on the gloves you want to get the exalted mana probably and then attack speed and then you know the usual crit avoid you can get some hybrid health endurance if you want probably it is probably a good idea to get uh, max endurance a uh, percent you don't really have to worry about uh, endurance threshold that much because we're going to be getting quite a lot of hp because we're building vitality and okay so for the boots like pretty much something like this is what you want vitality movement speed armor hybrid health uh yeah basically that uh and then okay so for the relic um this is actually kind of cool right so I had this relic with 14 strength on it, so I just decided to use this. The 30% uh, of armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. is really nice for mitigating dot damage. And we do have quite a bit of armor. You see, uh, 2,600 armor. I mean, not really the highest amount. You could probably get higher if you have some better gear. Um, but yeah, this really nice relic, and it gives you minus three mana uh, attack mana cost. So you can see our racing strike is only 27 mana instead of the usual 30. So that's pretty nice. And then we also get plus one to all sentinel skills. So that's why all my skills are level 21. So I definitely recommend this relic. It drops like quite often, and you can just go gamble them uh, from the vendor. You can just go buy a relic. And if you have a lot of these Rune of Ascendances, just use one of these. Obviously, I got a Primalist one, right? So they're really common from these Rune of Creation, so you can just use those. And what I did was I just bought, I had like 20 Runes of Ascendance, so I just bought like 15 of these. And then a lot of them turn into these Sentinel Relic things, so I just leveled them up. And this one turned out pretty good. T7 Strength, uh, T7 Void Resistance. So let's see, my Void Resistance is way over capped, but anyways... Okay, so we already went over the idols. Basically, all you want is just vitality. Vitality, armor shred, vitality, increased armor, vitality. Um, there is another uh, one you can use if you're having a little bit of mana problems. So mana efficiency with void spells. Okay, so that's not going to affect your racing strike, void cleave, or anything else. It's going to, but it is going to affect your abyssal echoes, right? So let's see if we get some of these. 
you can see right now it's at 35 mana. So whenever we use Void Cleave, Void Cleave is 22 mana. Abyssal Echo is 35, right? So that's going to be quite a bit of mana used just from doing one Void Cleave, right? So you can kind of uh, help out your mana problems by putting two of these in. So you can see it's now, instead of 35, it's 24 mana, right? So we cut off 10 mana from our Abyssal Echoes. So that might help you out a little bit if you're having some mana problems. I kind of wanted to have just go max damage. So I am going for the full vitality. Could probably get up to 90 with some better gear. Or even 100 plus and stuff like that. Okay, let's go over the passives. Uh, so for Sentinel, pretty standard Sentinel stuff, right? Um, some things to note is the Valiant Charge. This is going to decrease the cooldown of your Void Cleave. See, it's at 3.3 seconds right now. So I'll definitely get this. And we want the health and mana gained with uh, Rive, basically. And then we just want the attack speed. Okay, so after that, we're not actually putting anything into Paladin or Forge Guard's full Void Knight tree. Um, and I guess you, if you wanted to run Sigils instead of specking into Rive, you could do that if you want. I was actually using Sigils before Abyssal Echoes, but the damage wasn't really all that great. Uh, I think the Void Beam damage did go up, but the clear wasn't as good because we didn't have Abyssal Echoes. So in the end, just went over to full Void Knight and it ended up being a lot nicer. All right, so going into the Void damage, basically Void Spell damage, basically just taking all the spell damage. And then, you know, we do we do get the Crit Multi because our Racing Strike uh, is going to be doing a decent amount of damage as well. Get the Leech. Uh, time rot chance you could actually put it up here if you want doesn't really matter because we're not using the time rot because i think most people with void knight they come over here to get this 100 percent more melee damage versus 12 stacks but it's kind of too far away for me right now so i'm um, not using that so time rot really isn't all that important in the build right now uh, you definitely want to get this here the future mind for the 50 mana and then vitality over here you can get a little bit more vitality here if you want but i wanted to get the move speed basically so you could take some points out of here and put it into here to get five more vitality if you want um and then after that we're going to the echo chance mainly just to get the increased melee attack speed right so this build you want as much attack speed as you want because the faster you attack the faster you can get out your void beams basically and the faster you're going to get mana back with rive okay so uh, the more you attack speed you have, the better the gameplay will feel. Uh, it's also going to make your Void Cleave animation go off faster, so it's going to feel a lot better in Monoliths and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so that is that. And you don't want to take this node. Uh, it, do, it is kind of nice actually getting the extra 10% echo chance, but the increased mana cost uh, really does start to show. And unless you have maybe like, if you have like a T7... Um, Sentinel uh, Helmet with the Rive, T7 Rive uh, mana gain on hit, then maybe you could take that, but I don't know. Uh, not really worth it, I think. Okay, so that is the passes. Very simple. And let's go over the blessings. So for blessings, we are going for the uh, increased void damage. You can get either the increased void damage from the Black Sun, or you can go for the Void Res Shred. Uh, whichever one you want. I think in Monoliths, the increased Void Damage is going to be a little bit better because it's just like you get it right away. It's instant. Whereas the Void Res Shred, you actually have... You're only going to really start to see the max benefit on bosses. So um, it is something to note there. Um, I think the increased Void Damage is a little bit better because it's just like you get it right away. Okay, ending the storm, you want to get the mana. Reign of Dragons, Crit Avoidance... And Spirits of Fire, we want the Flat Armor. And the uh, Age of Winter, we want the Increased Armor. And I think that is it, right? Yeah. So that's the Blessings, basically. And let's see, anything else to talk about the build? Yeah, so like I said in the beginning, um, ended up being pretty fun. It's just the Void Beam mechanic itself isn't really... Um, I think it's, uh, yeah, it could use some improvements. Uh, definitely very fun. Uh, visuals are amazing. Clear, it was pretty good. Um, and like I said, um, you can 
you know, it's a new way of building a racing strike where you don't have to actually rely on Volta Reversal for your mana. You don't have to wait for the cooldown for a racing strike. And if you did go for a pure crit build, you know, you can go into this here, base crit over here, and you could just go for a pure crit version where you just, you know, can spam out like, uh, you know, hundreds of racing strikes. Maybe not hundreds, but let's just see. Oh, uh, we can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Like 12 erasing strikes or more. Uh, it's pretty insane, right? So if you have all of these at 100% crit, go full crit multi, you know, that's probably enough to just like delete half a, a boss, you know, a boss or half their HP pretty much. So, yeah. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed the build and, you know, learned something. Maybe you can incorporate some of these ideas into your builds. And, and you know, if this uh, helped you out in any way or you had fun trying these characters out, I appreciate it if you did like and subscribe. Uh, it really helped me out in making new videos. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, see you next time.